be strong. Hello and welcome to the Rhubarb Brothers Podcast. I'm your host, Chris. And I'm your host, Brant. And today we... I decorated for Christmas this past weekend, and we decorated for Christmas here. Yes, today. the Rhubarb Brothers decorated for Christmas. It's a big day. It's kind of gay, but we're in the season. That rhymed. We're but feeling fest. God damn! <laughs> Catch me on on my new mixed track. Bros over here spitting facts like Dr. Seuss. Yeah, lay beat, lay beat real quick, lay beat. Yeah, yeah. Come on, man. Give me something. Fuck no, Give me dude. one. Give no. me one. Yeah. They call me Dr. Seuss. Uh, people try and keep up. Call that sh- shit an excuse. Yeah. Y'all motherfuckers. I'm the train engine. Y'all hoes back in the caboose. That shit fire, though. Tell me that wasn't like better than you expected. <laughs> 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 that was better than you thought it would be. <laughs> Br- Brant's Dr. Seuss diss track <laughs> coming out this spring. Well, I'll, I'll mess around. And I'll come up with an official leak of it. It'll be it'll be pretty good. It'll be a promotional offer. Anyway, my bone to pick with you, you fucking asshole. What is so? Chris has two two cars. He has a a car and a truck. Are you really gonna this fucking- piece of shit? Took my parking space with his other vehicle, right? Yeah. So you remember the movie hey, Austin hey, Powers? Hey, Brant, Brant, it's my fucking house. You remember the movie Austin Powers? Yeah. You know the fucking scene when he's in that little yellow fucking buggy and he gets stuck in the fucking hallway I, and he does about a hundred and thirteen point turn. It's not my that fault. That was my fucking ass in your driveway. I went <laughs> at least twelve times before I got my car straightened out. Hey, Brant, Brant. It's not my fault. You're a dumbass. Uh, and Brand, my parking Brand. space was fucking taken. Brand, Brand, your parking space was not taken. This is my house. It was taken. That is my by... vehicle. <laughs> All right. So the cat stayed and had a bed, right? Yes. He had a bed. She had a bed. Yes. If I were to take the bed and fucking move it, chances are you'd say, "Why'd you take the cat bed? Because it resides there, right?" Right? Originally, it was a meditation pillow. Yes, it was. Okay. So the cat claimed it. It was for the cat. I gave it to the cat. I let you, you gave that parking space to me, technically speaking. Have out it. of repetition, that was mine. Now, I'm going to call out a very special woman, Stephanie. You <laughs> fucking dick. Have you ever heard the term, I brought you into this world? I can take you out. I gave you that spot. I can take it back. <laughs> God damn. Oh, come to think of it. I have my mom cracking up for the first time in like 12 years. Oh, really? So anyway, um, I finished school. Grades are finalized. Turns out I'm a fucking genius. Anyway, my mom is like, hey, you've got a you've got a call everybody in our family and let them know that you're not a fucking retard i'm like what she's like you've got to like tell everyone like you got good grades i'm like no i don't want to do that she's like why not like do it I'm, i don't ask you for much but i want you to do that so one thing leads to another and she's like i need to call your grandmother your, your grandfather your, your dad your, your stepmom like all this shit and i'm like why she's like because they would be proud and i'm like no you just want me to fucking sound like a dick She's like, no, you, you got to call. So I looked at her and I said, why don't you call? She's like, because they're not my grades. I'm like, wouldn't it be better? I, I wrote this down. You know the quotes that I have? I wrote this down in my quotes thing. Okay. It's better to get a call from a proud mom than a prideful son. How do you feel about that? <laughs> yeah. I think that's a good one. That's a keeper. And she looked at me that. and she stopped and just started cry laughing. She knew she got got. (laughs) She fucking got got. (laughs) Said, it's better to get a call from a proud mother than a prideful son. Hit that Una reverse card on her ass. (laughs) (laughs) 
We don't have a topic. Obviously not. Um, we're gonna we're gonna shoot the shit. We're we'll running low on things to talk about. We are gonna be having some guests yes. here pretty soon. So then we'll we'll have topics for that. Yeah, we'll have topics for our guests. But right now, when it's just us, I think we've we're just shooting the shit. We're honestly. just yeah. I mean, I've I've gotten compliments on just shooting the shit every now and then because like we'll give a good chuckle. So like we have a nice blend of like shooting shit, dumb shit, and then we have like a hard hitter. Yep. What What do you think about like shoot the shit and like out of a week we have like a good topic like like we prepare for a topic for a week and then anything outside of that we kind of shoot the shit. Sure. So like we have a week week to know what we're talking. About. I mean we're not really going by a set schedule so. I know. Eventually we'll have to hope. Hopefully we will be forced to reside to a schedule. <laughs> Hopefully it gets to that point. Yeah, but maybe sometimes that'll kind of take the fun out of it. If I can stick to a schedule and make money, we will have fun. Do you know how far away we are from making money but, with this? But we will have fun. I think we're 973 subscribers away from making money. <laughs> we need 1,000 subscribers to make money for what we do. And, yeah, I don't expect, I don't even know 1,000 people, to be honest. We're going to get there. Maybe. I th- I think at this point we just need content. Because I can't tell you how many times like I've gone through a thing and it's been like five minutes. And then I've covered everything. So like we're playing catch up for it. Yeah. And then like once we get enough shit, like people well, will be like, oh. We were also learning. I mean, if you look at our early Oh, yeah. Videos, like, like our first ones. Yeah. Dude, I forgot about, what was it, episode one that's in the vault. That shit's not coming out for a long time. <laughs> Oh, dude, I forgot. You, you could barely hear. You, we could barely hear you because the condenser was actually towards yeah, me. That was at the time we only had one of the condensers, though. Yeah, we only had one microphone and one condenser, and you could only hear me because the condenser was. Yeah, like I had to fucking me. yell, and that wasn't enough. And, like, we. Oh, that shit was so funny, though. Because we sat there and we're like. We both knew. With our intuition that this would never see the light of day. <laughs> I remember, cut, well, and then this guy over here. I called everybody out. I wanted the fucking He smoke. called out about 10 to 12 people by their full names. Oh, not, yeah. Not abso- just by abso- first name. Absolutely. fucking lutely. By last name, too. Called out so many people that we know. Mm-hmm. And it got to the point, he called out like 12, and I called out like three. <laughs> it, we were going in. It was not... A good, a good thing. It was to so. Post. <laughs> we, it, it's just it'd be bad, but at one point, it's gonna have to come out. And the reason that there's only like, epi- starting with episode seven on Spotify is because I actually deleted the files before I set up the Spotify account. Yeah. So. Well, eventually it won't matter. My dumbass. It, it'll be. It'll be all right. We'll. We'll figure it out. Like. Like, we even have people that care anyway. We'll, we'll figure it out. It'll, it'll we got, be all right. We got 27 subscribers. So, oh, but we have 15 listeners on Spotify, and we need 50 to start getting paid for it. Oh, I bet. What do you say I just, like, wait, li- like, do you mean listeners? Like, like one video gets 50, or, like, our account gets 50? Our account gets 50. Okay. Listeners. So That could be on any episode or anything. All right, we, well, we have 15 so far. And we need fifty. All right, so we'll we'll take the Spotify. We'll, we'll favor a, Spotify. It's a more reasonable goal. Yes. Than, than th- nine hundred and twenty, nine hundred and seventy three. Nine hundred and seventy three subscribers on YouTube and four thousand watch hours. Yeah. And we're sitting at forty two. I'm right gonna now. have to play the podcast when I go to fucking bed and like leave <laughs> auto play on, so like it just plays all through the night. And then wake up, start the next day, close it out with the Rubar Brothers. <laughs> okay, so here's something. So we both like Andrew Tate. I feel like we both slightly dislike Jake Paul. <laughs> Their fight. Yeah. I would like to say I've seen two stare downs ever in my life that I thought were fucking dope. Um, Joe Rogan brought one up that was... Um, it, it it was these two people, and one was like a fucking trained Navy SEAL, and the other one was just like top of the, in his prime fighting. Two stare downs, 
fucking awesome. Andrew Tate's was the most recent that I've seen, and I just loved everything about that fucking stare down. If he loses, if okay, he, he's I he's I lost say this everything. too. Because Jake Paul, if he loses this, it's like, oh, Andrew Tate did this. Right. But, like, if Andrew Tate loses, it's like, because I know me and I love Andrew Tate, but I know that I will probably never watch him again outside of this fight. Because, like, I watch him on, like, shorts and, like, reels and stuff like that because he comes up. Yeah. And, like, I know if he loses that fight, that, like, that's it. He's just going to fall off. Yeah. I'm right there with you. Um, if he loses this fight, <laughs> the amount of embarrassment that's going to come Ex- from Exactly. That. Like, I will say, I stand by... I don't necessarily like Jake Paul. I fucking hate Logan Paul. I like his best friend, Mike, though. I... I like his friends more than I like him. Logan kind of grew on me a little bit, but I don't really like talking about the Pauls because they're all shit. I just, Except I- for Aaron Paul. Aaron, we do like Aaron Paul. We do like Aaron Paul. Fuck, God, I love Aaron. Bitch, <laughs> bitch. I wanted to leave the keys on the counter, bitch. bitch. <laughs> but no, like, I I didn't necessarily like Logan, even from Vines. When Vine was big years ago, yes, I didn't necessarily like his shit. Like, I would watch Vine because I was a kid. Like, I had nothing but fucking time in the world. I would watch Vine compilations, and like, they're like thirty minutes long and shit like that yeah. now. And, like, I would watch him, and, like, his shit just... I never necessarily laughed at it. Like, it was always just like, oh, this one. Right. Yeah. But, like, I like I like him as a person now, I guess. But, like, his content, like, the shit he does. Like, I think it's cool he's in WWE. Like, I think that's cool. But, like, outside of that, not for me. Not not that guy. But, like, I, I like... I miss Vine. I like his two friends. I like Mike. I think Mike's a funny-ass dude. And then, I don't know the other guy's name, but he's the one with the big-ass beard. Now, have you listened to Logan Paul's podcast? I, I, honest to God, despite what I just said, I think I'm subscribed to Logan on Snapchat just so I can watch, like, clips from his podcast. Like, I could give a fuck what he's doing. Like, I could give a fuck about Prime Energy. Like, whatever the fuck. Yeah. But, like, I like, I like listening to his friends more than him. Now, my, my gripe with Jake Paul is I respect what he's doing, and I think he's a legit boxer. I've watched a side-by-side from him in, I think, 2018 when he started, and him now. Yeah. He's a boxer. I'll Mm -hmm. give him that. He's a boxer. Like, I, he's grown well. Now my issue arises when he's fighting fucking grandparents. (laughs) Pick somebody from your goddamn sport... Not MMA. We saw yep. how Conor McGregor got tired in the fucking first round because yep. he's a first round fighter. He gets a fucking knee or a submission. It is a first round fighter. UFC fights, I think there's like five for a championship. Dude closes in the third round. Dude went like five with Floyd Mayweather and was fucking gas. Yeah. It's different. Fucking, they train for like. A broad variety of fucking fighting styles they, with like a spritz of cardio. I I also believe that they have more, they that they can take a hit better than what some boxers can. Yeah, See, boxers like, can take a hit better yeah, yeah, than yeah. most UFC because normally they're just one hit. You know. Yes. Whatever. See, like like my thing is like. Okay, so when we're we're gonna get really specific. So like with punching power, it's it's different if it's like. Like a full fist, but if I like clip you with my knuckle, it's different because it's it's a targeted point. So like if I get caught with a fucking elbow, that's a small fucking point. That's gonna rock my shit more than like a, a foam. And also, I forget where I heard it from, but boxing is a much bloodier sport than MMA is, just for the sheer fact of different glove styles. You mm-hmm. would think the bigger glove with more cushion would mm-hmm. prevent a lot of injuries and shit. But no, that just means, oh, I can bunch him much harder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my hand won't hurt from it. Yeah, because, like, I hate to say it, but, like, I've tried both gloves on, and I can punch significant... Let me... Let me not significantly, but I feel safer punching at a yeah. much higher power. And, like, the thing is, is, like, you wrap your wrist with a wrap. Mm-hmm. You wrap your knuckles 
in between your fingers, and then you even wrap up your wrist with another co- like. So your wrist is sturdy. pretty much secured. Exactly. So like, not only do you have a fucking behemoth of a fist, you have your fucking forearm wrap to yep. go with your fucking wrist. And another thing is, is how MMA gloves are are designed is that they're open fingered too. Mm-hmm. So not only do you have less padding on your exactly, hands, yeah. But you also risk breaking a fucking finger exactly, mid-fight. Yeah. And if you break a fucking finger, it'd be hard to make a Ex- fist yes. correctly. And it would just make the whole... And they're calculated with what they can do. They make sure they yeah. have a clear hit before they... Yeah, even, absolutely. Because if not, it can it, be yeah. pretty and bad. And like, like the thing is, is they... It, it's like some... like. The majority of fights that I see in UFC, yeah, there's knockouts, but I most likely see submissions. And, like, when Connor fought fucking Floyd, Floyd is, like, motherfucker's a 12-round fighter. Like, his conditioning is insane. Yeah. So, like, the parallel between that, like, I know motherfuckers that run 13 miles that box. Like, Jake Gyllenhaal in the movie Southpaw, motherfucker was casually running 13 miles. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, uh, UFC has cardio, MMA has cardio, but it's not to the caliber of fucking 12 rounds yep. of strict upper body. Like, it's different. So, like, when Jake Paul's out here fucking fighting, it's like, yeah, he's a boxer and, like, they can fight. But it's not like Anderson Silva can fucking put him in a flying triangle choke mid-match. Like, that's different. If Jake Paul went in the UFC, he'd be fucking dead. Yeah. So when when... Half retired, fucking semi retired people from that just just casually ease out of retirement to fight this guy. Completely different. And dude, they're making so much fucking money. I mean, fuck. It. It, if fucking Jake Paul was like, step in the ring with me, pussy, I'm like, bet. I'll take my 25 million, get love tapped in the fucking chin, dead. Yeah. I'll, I'll be carried out on a stretcher for all I fucking yep. care. But like, if if I was half retired from the UFC, you're absolutely right. I'd take that fight, Fuck give him yeah. a little show, live my glory days out, and then fucking go down. Yep. Absolutely right. Yep. But, like, quit fighting people that are not at your level. How about you fight somebody that is a fucking boxer? Do that, and then I will grant you, oh, he won against a boxer. Not his first three fights being fucking washed up. Hall of Famer, old ass, semi retired fighters. I think it was Joe Rogan that I was listening to that he was talking about the uh that he was talking about Jake Paul. And he said I commend his business effort because like motherfucker got it figured out. Yeah. But if you want to be considered as a true boxer, yes. Go against people that are at the same level as that, you are. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like there it to me it just looks like he's afraid. Because like the mo- because like Andrew Tate, if he goes out there and fights a legitimate boxer and fucking loses, yeah. then it's gonna be like, we told you. Yeah. Like yeah. it's not gonna be a career ender for him, but he's gonna be like, it's gonna hurt it, him. Yeah, it's gonna be like, we fucking told you, and every everybody's gonna be like, I told you so. Well, it's just like, think of how much uh, recovery time Logan needed after that whole suicide force shit. Okay, I'm going to be straight up. I don't see an issue with the backlash from that. I get the disrespectful side of it. I I understand it. But I think it was blown out of proportion because people have done that and people have posted pictures about it. And it is a fucking forest dedicated to that. It is a tourist attraction. I hate to say it. It's a thing. I also believe that he didn't know... Um, he, he thought in the moment it'd be funny and whatever, but like you find someone hanging from a tree in the woods. I, I wouldn't post that video. No. I mean, just, that's, just that's the issue it. in it. Exactly. Is he posted it. That's, that's, that's the tough one about it. That's the issue in it. That's, that's the only issue I have with it. He could have recorded that. He could have laughed even if he, if he made the joke. He's like, oh my God, is that a dead body? All that shit. Yeah. The, the, that would have been fun if he would have just not posted it. If he wouldn't have posted it, he wouldn't have had three years recovery time to get to back where he was yeah, before. That's him being a fucking idiot. I guess I get he was younger and like did stupid shit. 
again, I think he's aged much better than he, I expected him to. He handled that backlash very, very well. That's something else that bothers me is I see him and like I see videos like this all the time and it's like he will do whatever people tell him to say because he has to. Yeah. So like is he really like that? You know, I, I get it. I get like wanting to keep that, but it comes at a sacrifice of like the shit he said about Andrew Tate. I hate to say it, but there's no way he's that fucking smart. There's no way. There's no way. That was too well written. I I I think I saw a YouTube short, or it may may have been on TikTok or whatever, of him like bashing Tate and whatever. Yeah. And a lot of the stuff he said, I'm surprised he's that passionate about. Like, it's it's just it, that's what I think is because him back then he would have been all for that, but now like, I just feel like he was using his platform for other people. And you even mentioned Tate's name. And you're just, you're taking a gamble every time you mention his name. Like, I wasn't even talking about it the other day. And then, fucking, I was saying something like. The backlash that you yeah. get, though. Like, I was at work and I brought something up and they're like, you listen to him? I'm like, fuck yeah. I Immediate do. hate. I'm like, fuck towards it. Towards us. Yes. Immediate hate. It's like, I don't agree with, I mean, I thought it was pretty funny when he's like, I, I challenge e- my son to Mortal Kombat. Like, I don't even bring it up. And somehow it revolves back to me. Mm-hmm. I I don't even fucking bring it up. And then somehow, yeah. somewhere, I I say something like, I think I was talking about fucking Matt Walsh, Matt Walsh or fucking uh, Stephen Crowder, and saying, yeah, you know, you know, I I see some things that I agree with them, but they are very ex- extreme yeah. to so, my viewpoints. It's so like with Stephen, the majority of stuff I've seen with him. I agree almost wholeheartedly, but like I've only seen certain things that I'm specifically looking for. The one thing about Steven Crowder is that his information is very good. Mm -hmm. He's a little biased on some things. Like I watched a video the other day where it said women should not be in combat roles. And that, well, that, that heading I had some problem with Mm -hmm. because throughout the video I was watching, from him was he was he was basically saying that they lowered the standards for you know mm-hmm. the military I, yeah. to, to allow women in sure but then at the same time he's also saying if women couldn't pass the you know pre-1970 uh requirements to get into then the they military be. then yeah sure let them in then you just disproved what you have on your fucking table yeah say that the requirements need to go up, and I do believe that the requirements do go up. Yeah. They need to come up. But if a a physically fit woman could pass the same requirements, the same yeah. minimal requirements as it was back in the 70s, mm-hmm. then they should be more than yeah, more, more than allowed. More to, than welcome yeah. to, to do it. Yeah. And, I, and the police academy... Uh, from what I've heard, has taken a dive as well to allow more women in, of course. Mm-hmm. And I read through a couple comments on that of ex-police officers that were female, and they had said they had they would put through uh, so much effort on a day-to-day basis when their partner, who is a male, barely even broke a sweat. And there is yeah. some there is some differences in that because if you see a woman come coming trying to you know, apprehend you and whatever. Mm -hmm. And you see this tiny little girl that has nothing but a gun to defend herself. You can outpower her. You know, that's, that's a lot of, a lot of the argument. I, I don't even know. Like I see shit. Like, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of women that are in well enough shape that can do it. I've seen, I know people that do it. Like my dad works for the government. Like I've seen women do some crazy shit. Yep. Like I also think like, it comes in with training to defend yourself. Yes. It's like, I do Brazilian jiu-jitsu. So, like, that's not, like, box. Like, I'm not going out and fucking putting all of my punching power in shit like that. Like, right. it's designed so you make the mistakes and I, I, that's my advantage. Like, I use your body weight against you. Yep. So, like, when they do that, like, if they're trained well, then it's different. 
Like, if they can take care of themselves, that's fine. Right. But, like, it, if I were in the Army and I made it in the the 80s and I was still, like, I was there when they lowered it, I would be weary of, like, I went through all of this shit along with a few women who I am 100% sure that they're ready. They're not going to break. They're not going to do any of this. Then they just lowered it, and now and yeah, you it, can't have the same trust with someone who skimped by exactly. on lesser requirements. Yeah. I think that's what would get me. Because, like, fuck, I was watching Marcus Luttrell talk about okay. his, like, the, he, he, like, broke down scenes in the movie. I think it was, like, a three-minute speech. And he talked about what he went through. He's like, not once did anyone anybody I was with, like, break. It was, it was, we're here, we know what we're here to do, we're going to do it. Dude broke his back, bit his tongue, like, almost completely off. Yeah. Ribs, arms, fucking compound fractures, gunshots, and he's like, he's still going. Like, he was trained completely differently than a lot of other people, because he was a fucking SEAL. Yep. So, like, when they lower that, and shit gets real, like, I just don't know, like... If I went through that requirement, I would be more weary of the people that kind of went in with lesser requirements yep. for that situation when shit happens. Yeah, and that's that's basically the argument that uh, Crowder had on his uh, YouTube video. Mm -hmm. And I agreed with it, and a lot of the people that he was talking with agreed with it as well. They just had a problem with the wording of the sign. Yeah, it's very off-putting. Yes, and he even disproved it himself. If a woman can pass the requirements, then there should be no reason why yeah. they can't go through and be in a combat role. And just look at your Ukraine. There was a Ukrainian model that picked up fucking arms and yeah. went to war with the rest of them. That's fucking fantastic. Yeah, it can be done. Yes. And the whole thing about... Uh, and he went on a tangent about, like, uh, male-on-female crime and everything. And I do believe that every female, if they're going to be living alone, if they're going to be walking alone, to have a concealed carry. Yeah. Because that is one of the only ways that they can overpower a man on the fly. Yeah, and, like, I'm going to say this. Quit walking with headphones in. <laughs> the amount of people that I fucking see ignorant to their surroundings... Really? Yeah. Like, I hate to be that guy, but if you're giving people an in and they're there for that sole purpose, then that's their in. You can only prevent that. And there was an argument where it's like uh, this woman said, uh, the men around here, they can walk around. Excuse me. They can walk around with their headphones in. Not I don't have do to, that shit. Not have to worry about anything. Not have to worry about their surroundings and everything. And he literally stopped her right there and he's like, if you're walking around and you have no idea about your surroundings, you are a dumbass. Yeah, no, <laughs> exactly. It's just like me. Like if, honest to God, because I have cash with me almost all the time because I serve. It's yeah. so like I'll have cash. When I have cash on me, I will not walk into any place with it unless it's like $50. Like, if I forget, that's one thing. But, like, I don't want to have $300 on my person to give away. Right. It's just common sense. Like, debit cards, if they take my ID, whatever. If they take my debit cards, I'll just freeze it. Yeah. But, again, I'm not walking around without headphones. Yep. I'm not fucking going into shady-ass areas that I don't have to be in. I get it, like, walking on campus at night. Like, there are night classes and shit like that. Yeah. But I'm not strung out drunk. I was... <laughs> When I was in college, uh, I, I had a night class when I first started, and it was so weird being the last people to leave campus mm -hmm. and going in that freaking parking garage. That parking garage used to freak me out. Yeah, no, uh, that's just fucking common sense. And, and I'm a dude. I couldn't yeah. imagine what the fucking girls it, would think. Exactly. So why? Why have headphones? At? Why, yep. why give the in? Yep. It's like, yeah, it'd be phenomenal if people don't do dumb shit. Like, that'd be phenomenal. But it happens. Yep. And it's kind of your job to prepare for it happening. Yep. Completely agree. Now, Mr. Walsh, he's far. He is he, far. Very, 
which I don't necessarily. He said some things. I will say a fourth of. Okay, so I've seen Crowder more than I've seen Walsh. Yes. And when I watch Crowder, I can three fourths of what he says I can get with. My problem with Crowder is is his information is good. It's just he doesn't let people fucking talk at I, all. I mean, like the stuff I've seen him in, I think that's his goal. It's like what what the fuck was his name? Uh, Pierce, when he was talking yeah. with Tate, Tate called him out. He's like, "If you don't interrupt me, I can say something yep. that's going to combat it." Yeah, and like, I guess that's the name of the game. Like, if I can berate you with information, and by the time you come up with something, and I find a niche in it, like I would, like that's just the name of the game. But here's the thing: fucking Crowder would literally call out whoever he's interviewing. He will call them out and say, "Would would I'm." Please don't interrupt me. I'm trying to. I'm trying to talk yeah. here. When they're trying to explain their reasoning yes. for a question that he asked, yeah, and it's like he gives. He does. Yeah, he doesn't let people finish a thought because he's got to get in there mm-hmm. and whatever. And then he calls them out about interrupting him. He's the fucking one interrupting all yep. of them. If he could like talk like a civilized fucking person with the viewpoints that he has, which it might go somewhere. And yeah, and I I found out that. Really, the only people that he talks civilized with is someone that finds common ground with him right away. That yeah. If you come in, guns hot, fucking... Yeah. <laughs> if you come in fucking gung-ho with facts <laughs> and shit, you might stand a chance. Yeah, like... Uh, <laughs> if you come in there being like a bitchy liberal... First yeah, yeah, like the people that I see on yeah. Change My Mind, they're they're before they sit down with this man, they are calling security. They're like waving their fucking arms around. They're frantic. Yes, and those are the people that I find that he doesn't give the time of day to let them finish their thought because he knows that whatever they're gonna say, it, it's just whack. It's right. whack, and that it's it's less often than not but i have seen very good constructive uh, I have, yeah. conversations with him and whoever he was interviewing with mm-hmm. a different opinion i have seen that and those are the ones that he ends up showing a little more respect to and doesn't interrupt as much yeah um but if you come in there with a bitchy attitude like hi hi how are you nice to meet you how are you <laughs> <laughs> hey. for for those of you that don't know chris as Easily the worst goddamn handshake preamble I've ever seen in my fucking life. <laughs> so I've I've figured it out. They, they gave me shit because when I go to shake hands, my fingers are curled. But I've also noticed that my fingers don't go straight, motherfucker. <laughs> it's different. You you go like this. I don't it's, go like this. It's, like, th- this is how you shake a goddamn hand. Like that? Come here. The fuck's wrong These with you? These fingers are, are Why set. are you trying to finger me, Come dude? Come here, you fucking dick. These fucking two are going to loop under your hand, and these two are going to rest near your wrist. I feel like that's more weird. Come here, fucking... Look at that. The wrist... See, it's set. Motherfucker comes in here like... <laughs> <laughs> You're an idiot. <laughs> All right, um, where were we? <laughs> Handshakes aside, back to fucking fucking uh, Crowder and Walsh. Okay, no disrespect to Matt Walsh, but from the clips I've seen, and I and granted I've only seen like five or six, yeah, just repeated. Crowder, he makes good arguments. His information's there. Walsh, his information's there. His delivery reminds me of about a 40-year-old Republican dad. <laughs> like, like he'll sit there with, like, his, like, daughter and, like, like and I'm setting the scene. He's sitting there with his daughter, and she's like, um, I'm thinking about being a boy. He's like, well, why aren't you a cat? You can't be a cat. You're a girl. Or, like, what was his thing? He, I saw a clip of him, and he's like, um... So you can't tell me what a woman is? What's yeah. a cat? Like that that's one of the clips. He just goes about it very weird yes. unless he's in like a really constructive set environment. There, I think there was one video that I sent you where he was talking to a uh physician who who was a pediatric physician. Yeah, 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 yeah. That 
uh, was very liberal. You can tell by the haircut and her demeanor. There's a demeanor. The, that yes. Miss. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like shit like that. I, I saw that. I saw that one. And yeah. he's fucking uh, interviewing her and whatever. And the beginning of it, and he's like, so so I'm to understand that you uh, prescribe children that want to go through transition Lupron, right? And she's like, yes. Yeah. Yes, I do. Yep. And all that shit. And he's like, oh, uh, don't you know that's a drug used for chemical castration? Your wording is off. That, that <laughs> keep in mind that for pedophiles. Keep in mind that this was, in fact, a drug that they used for sex offenders to chemically yes. castrate them back in the day. Yes. Like, it, that was its sole purpose. Yes. And you can look, and she never denied it either. No, she, she just, she said, just went around it. She's like, your wording's off. Like, and, <laughs> Yeah, and then he gave the breakdown of a drug. And, and she's like... I wouldn't use that that term for that and whatever. He's yeah. Like, oh, I can look it up for you. Chemical castration is when you chemically change an imbalance to change yeah. either testosterone or whatever. The exactly. Fuck. Yeah. And she's like, oh, okay. So, so you're okay with giving these chemical castration drugs to kids? I do not give drugs to kids. I give them medication. Yeah. <laughs> All this shit, like it, just any way that you could get around the bluntness of it. And here's the punchline. She's like, using drugs I give to kids is malignant and harmful. And he's like, well, I would think that uh, giving chemical castration drugs to kids is malignant and harmful. Yeah. <laughs> Just <laughs> threw down the fucking inner reverse card. <laughs> she was done after that. She fucking yeah, like, yeah, yeah, walked yeah. away. You just can't reason with them. And, and you can't see that. It's so, it, it's not that you can't reason with them. It's just that. The majority of the arguments that I've seen, it's it's an issue of what is a fact and what is more abstract. Like, there's, like, concrete evidence supporting one thing. And the other thing is abstract. So, it's like, believe, like, you believe it. There's not a lot of information backing it. There's no numbers backing it. But it is what you believe. It's almost like religion. Yeah. Like, if I were to tell you that your religion isn't real, it's like, oh, well, like, I believe it. Right. Like that's the disconnect. And it's like you can have a con- a constructive argument but you don't have to yell and scream yeah. and do all of this. Like you can just agree to disagree. Like I've seen constructive arguments. I don't have to agree with it, but I can talk about it like an adult. Yep. But there doesn't need to be all of that. I have been noticing and this is a little bit skewed of what we've been talking about, but I have been noticing that on my Snapchat, all the leftist bullshit is starting to turn. I think uh, I'm starting to see a lot of shit about detransitioners and whatever on Snapchat. I've seen that come through Instagram. Yeah. Well, I'm seeing it prominently through Snapchat, and it's mainly the Daily Wire, which... Old Ben. (laughs) Big old... Big Ben. And Brett Cooper... News mommy. God forbid. Uh, what I wouldn't do. <laughs> but they they interviewed a bunch of these detransitioners, and uh, they've come forward and everything. And the amount of backlash that they get for detransitioning, it's it's insane. They yeah. were uh, – how, how could they be a part of your community and then not be a part of your community and you just disregard them? That's like something that. – that goes back to that Daphne. Yeah. That Daphne story. That, that was ridiculous. Yep. It's you're with them until you disagree, yep. and then, and then you're nothing. And that's the thing is that a lot of the detransitioners made the decision before they were of age. And yeah, before they were really ready to to feel the weight. Which you think about it, when you were 16, did you have very much knowledge of the world? Um, when I was 16, I knew everything, but now 20, I realized that I knew absolutely fucking exactly. nothing. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's so, a good way to put it. <laughs> so like so like if I were to look at like I know me and I know like 2016 Brant, yeah. I'd be like so um don't do this. <laughs> and I'd be like who the fuck is this guy telling don't me? Don't tell me what to fucking do. Who the fuck's this guy telling me what to do? Who the fuck is do? that guy? He's like listen, you don't know what you don't know. And I'm like motherfucker, I know what I don't know and I know how to know. <laughs> 
Just God forbid. <laughs> why is Gamora? <laughs> what is? I'll do you one better. Why is Gamora? <laughs> but yeah, that I mean, just, and even even if a five year old came up to you, a five year old boy says, yes. "I want to be a girl." What is wrong with the parents see buying into that shit and forcing it on them? See, like I think something I have an issue with is like I I think about this from time to time. So, like, kids that are adopted, who don't know they're adopted, and then they find out that they're adopted, they're like, fuck, like, like, what about my parents? Like, like, do I have a dad? Do I have a mom? Like, what, yeah. what, wh- who am I really supposed to be? And, like, it's always, like, even in movies, it's like, I've got to figure out who I am. It's an identity crisis. Exactly. So, when you're 17, and you look like a boy, and... And then, like, you find out, like, from your birth certificate that you don't even have a gender. It might be, like, a fucking shock moment. Or, like, right. to find out that you were raised one way and then you start asking questions at, like, whenever the fucking ripe age of sex sex education is. Yeah. And, like, you're sheltered. Like, your parents keep you to themselves. Whatever. And then you're, like, you don't know, like, a dick from a vagina. Like, you just don't know. Like, as a kid, like, I didn't look at my dick. I'm, like... I'm a fucking dude. I think it's 17. You'd pretty much like, like know. I was just a kid. So like, let's say like you hit like 13, like when you're start going through puberty and you're like, why do I have nobody here? Like, why is like all this shit weird? And then like you are in the sex ed classes and you're like, I'm sorry, what? Yeah. And then it's like that. Oh shit. Like, who am I? And they're teaching sex ed way too early nowadays. I mean, I, it's it's getting to I the mean, point where it's kindergarten, first grade that they're I, I, doing that. I like the the education aspect of it. I like them teaching. I there there's a right and a wrong way. There's a bluntness that you shouldn't put. <laughs> it when shouldn't you're be teaching. that early. Exactly. Like you can like this is a girl. Like like there's like a like a no touch zone. Like shit like that. Like that yeah. for me is plenty of sex education yes. for that. But I don't need to have my my third grade son. Like being shown pictures of flaccid dicks and stuff like that, he gets enough of that at home. Exactly, it's just I don't, I don't need to to have to battle that. Yeah, and like something else is like in college now. Like, th- so I was at like in, in I don't even want to say an early age, but like I caught it before it changed. So my class was race, class, and gender. After I took that class, it had immediately changed to race class gender and sexuality and i hate to say it but when i was talking because i was in tight with one of the professors like i always did goodness class and participate so he liked me when covid was a big thing was when i took it kind of so like yeah. i was one of the few that would show up to his class while everybody did online so like we had like he knew me and i knew him yeah and anytime we run into each other we'll talk and exchange niceties and stuff like that and he's like i just Granted, it's a lib- liberal school, yeah, Fairmont State. Like, it's leaning more towards liberalism. So, like, when I was talking to him, he's like, I don't know how to, like, change my course schedule and stuff like that. And I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, it's changed to gender and, se- and sexuality. And he's like, before, like, we taught about the the – the immigration side of it, the cultural changing, the 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 disillusion of people and the dispersion of culture, race, ideas, beliefs, and stuff like that from like and you would trace it back to the original point and you would go through that. His class changed to basically being about sexuality. Like disregard all of that. So it changed from from you would learn uh, you would have an intro of how culture moves. And then it turned to, okay, these are the genders. These are how they affect people. And it turned into like the more the psychological aspects of disregarding what people ask, how they how they accept it, how to accept it, stuff surrounding that. Here's here's the thing with that. They are putting way too many labels on things and they're creating stuff that isn't there. Exactly. And why do you need a whole class on it when you can basically tell you're a boy or a girl, you either like Girls, if you're a boy, or if you're a girl, you like boys. That's straight. If if yeah. you like the same sex, that's homosexual. If you don't like anything, that's asexual. If you like both, that's bisexual. That's all you need to know. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. Like realistically, like like 
I, I don't. Everything s- else is made up. <laughs> I don't see the difference between pansexual and bisexual. There is no difference. The, uh, the difference to me is a name. And I. Uh, oh, do you- We're getting involved. Hey, you want to know something? You want to know what a semi. Uh, it's straight. Se- yeah. Semi bisexual. It means that you only like one gender. Yeah. Of the opposite sex. Semi bisexual is straight. <laughs> you can't even fucking make this shit up. Are you ready? Yes. So, so pansexual is like rain for an umbrella term. So, gender. So they're an envision bisexual, like liking boys and girls, right? Yeah. So when you pull boys and girls away, and you take boys, girls, transgenders, um, gender fluid, binary, like all of those, so the umbrellas, pansexual likes all of them. So here's another question I have about that: If there is a pansexual and there is a bisexual. Being bisexual me- is admitting that there is only two genders. It I maybe maybe that's why pansexual is a thing. But if pansexual is a thing, that should do away with the whole it, bisexual it shit. Ju- like that's what I don't. I, you, I don't know. you know, it, it's hard for me to wrap my head around it. And hey, you want to know some shit? I saw Bones and all, and that's it. It's the is n- that the one with Timothy Chalamet? Uh, whatever. T- <laughs> oh my god it's Tim- it's it's timothy charlamagne oh my god it's timothy charlamagne but yes it, it's i went to go see it with apple annie's girl mm-hmm. i went to go see it and we both fucking hated this movie really i'm not gonna spoil it, it it's, i don't i don't it's hard know to it's spoil bad. anything about it because it's fucking a waste of time okay it was the biggest waste of fucking three hours pretty much i've ever Spent Three my- fucking hours. Well, like we got there, we had to go through the AMC fucking classic, the Nicole, hour, Ki- the Nicole hour long fucking commercials and shit like that. And then, and then came the movie, and then came the credits, and then came the fucking wondering what in the fuck you just sat through, dude. Every time the Nicole Kidman ad comes in, I literally yes, it <laughs> fuck it. If you're watching AMC, get rid of it. It's fucking sick. I don't need to have a commercial for being in your own fucking theater. <laughs> They only play it at their own fucking theater. Yep. I don't need to see it. So anyway, um, I'm fucking there. I finish this movie. I sit there and I, I look over like she's over here, but I look over and I'm like, out of everything that was there to offer in that movie, it seemed like it was forced to be an acceptance of cannibalism. I shit you what? not. As oh, crazy oh, yeah. as that sounds, I did see a trailer. About there, it. Yeah, there was right. nothing. It, it's based off a novel, and I did the research to try and wrap my head around what the fuck I just saw. And the novel sounds good. It sounds it, it's they're superhumans. So envision like a vampire movie, but they eat people. Yes. Okay. So like like they have a sense of others. So like if you were a cannibal and I would to and I were in Walmart and we were both in Walmart, I would be like. And I would be able to find out that you're a cannibal. And the way it was set up in the novel is that they're supernatural beings with supernatural abilities. Yeah. So like a modified vampire movie, okay. right? This one, they're ordinary fucking people that are just like, I smell like a stronger iron sense, like an iron sense on you, which is like related to blood, whatever. And like there, in the novel, there's this guy and they, and he refines this woman's skill. With smelling. Yeah. And in the movie, he, he she just meets this guy. And she's like, he's like, I smelled you from across town. And she's like, what? He's like, I know. I can teach you how to use it. And there is a 30-second clip of her. He's like, what do you smell? She's like, iron. He's like, yeah, that's it. And that that's it. That's the fucking training. That's it. That's it. They don't even fucking brush up on it. And they're normal fucking people. In the end of this movie, it's like a it's like a romance, right? So, in the end, it's like you're supposed to feel bad for like it was the sympathy move for cannibalism. It, it was like an acceptance of cannibalism. 
Dude, they tried pulling that shit with the Jeffrey Dahmer series, too. I didn't even fucking watch that. I didn't watch that because every fucking girl I knew was like, it's so good. I'm like, it's definitely shit. Which I will say, it was very hard to sit through, but it was probably one of the most accurate depictions of Jeffrey Dahmer. I mean, probably. Like, seen. props to, what was his name? Evan. Uh, Evan Peters. Evan Peters. Props to him. Great fucking actor. Yeah. He, he played him perfectly. And everything mm-hmm. was like. You look at the found footage and everything. And yeah, it was like, like spot on. It was spot on. The apartment looked the exact same. A lot of the actors looked yeah. like the actual victims. And But it was very, very graphic and very unsettling to watch. But they, they I, I can't really explain it, but somehow they make you fucking feel for him. And it's weird. That's that. That's that. Like acceptance shit. Like it's like it's not his fault. He had something wrong with his brain. My my it, f- my favorite part is that they put it in the LGBTQ category in Netflix, and they raged about it, and they took it off. Of course they did. <laughs> Fuck. Fuck Netflix. They get rid of good fucking shows. They cancel Dave Chappelle to a point where he's like, I'm never doing a fucking special for them. Shit like that. Almost every single show I like to watch, they fucking is gone. Canceled. Like I will say, they stepped up and they put Wedding Crashers on Netflix. I think till the end of the month. I think it's I think it's gone tomorrow. Honestly, there's a Netflix show that I like to watch. It was called uh, End of the Fucking World, where the fuck what was that about? Where the dude's trying to kill the girl that he's with. Oh, and like he like gets feelings for. Her. Yeah. I like that one. I, I liked that shit all the way. They through. They fucking canceled it. Of course they did, because it was fucking good. Yeah. Of course they did. I have a question for you. We were talking about Jeffrey Dahmer. Yes. How do you feel about nature versus n- nature versus nurture? I do believe and Which one do you side with? This is This is like how a lot of people probably felt, but I do think that his dad showing him taxidermy that young of an age and him showing that much of an interest probably wasn't something he should have been playing into. But like like deep down like was that was that it or do you think somewhere inside of his head because like i've seen clips of this one girl i forget her name i'm not going to remember her name off the top of my head but she shows the biggest disassociation and lack of emotions and it's like we didn't really do anything this was how she just was right so like do you think like that was his thing and that only refined it like he became infatuated with that or was it just like see like i think it was for jeffrey dahmer i think it was a combined like i'm going to say combined he was sexually attracted to organs yeah that's the issue he had been from a young age dissecting fucking dead yeah. roadkill animals for so long and then it it somehow subconsciously he enjoyed it. It turned into a sexual fascination for him. Mm-hmm. And his dad should not have been doing that. And he even admitted, like, what, how yeah. they depicted him in that show, that he probably shouldn't have been doing that that young. Which, when I saw the flashbacks, I was like, what the fuck? Yeah. Why would that? Why would a dad play into that shit? Taxidermy's weird. I mean... I, 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 I don't want to say I get it, but I can understand he, like he wanted to like bond as a father, with, like you're sharing what you yeah. do with your son. He wanted to bond with his kid. A place. Yeah. There is a way to bond that is not that. Yeah. Try checkers. That's a good one. <laughs> That's a nice bonding experience. I will say. By the way, I found out I'm a fucking god at checkers. Dude, I love checkers. Me and my 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 dad beats me every fucking time. I really? play checkers with him. Yep. Dude, I played checkers with Apple and his girl. Match lasts about forty five seconds. I didn't lose a single piece. Cleared the board. Apparently, I'm a fucking genius. Okay. Like I have the same IQ as fucking Einstein. Straight up. You heard it here first. So. <laughs> Brent comes out as a genius. <laughs> Brent comes out as something. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't don't make it gay. <laughs> no, don't make you it gay. You looked at me. <laughs> All right. So I have a question. Really 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 fucking off topic. Give me one of your hot takes. I on what? I think we should start a segment of like a hot take. Like on fucking what? Just anything. 
Like, like my thing was that I saw a video of like people flying, and then like I heard the rationality years ago, and I'm like, my hot take is that we would not fly if there were no flying. If there was any like flightless like fl- birds, we wouldn't be able to fly. We would have no concept of it. The only reason that we're able to fly is because there were birds flying. Like there were f- fly animals. Uh, yeah, I get that. So like that's my hot take. Okay. <laughs> What's yours? Give me one. Uh, I don't fucking know. Give me one. It's so fucking random. Just give me one. I don't know. I think pineapple belongs on pizza. No. <laughs> yes. I mean, I'm not going to argue that too much because I've never tried it. But Really? No. It. The catch is, is that it has to be its own pizza. You can't take a pepperoni pizza and slap pineapple on it. You can't do that. That's wrong. That's criminal. But like a Hawaiian pizza, you get pineapple, ham, and bacon. That's a nice combination. That's a good one. Dude, it's so weird. Think about it. <laughs> no. Give me a hot take. I don't know. Uh, you know how... Bumblebees shouldn't be able to fly because they have such tiny wings and such a okay. fat body. What if Santa's reindeer fly because they believe they can fly like bees do? If that's the type of random fucking shit you want... I think that that's a decent hot take. What makes Santa's reindeer fly? They believe Is it Christmas spirit? Is it? Or what if... Or what if we could truly believe we could fly i i've woken up from a dream before and have believed i could fly because i flew in my dream i've i've recently been on we we've talked about dreams and stuff like that and i had a dream the other day and i'm not sure if i'm like i had a dream that i ran a red light and for the past three days i've been thinking about whether i actually did that or not whether that was a dream or not i swear it was a dream but, like, it was so real. And I'm not sure whether I actually ran a red light or not. I've had multiple dreams where I was basically flying. like, And, and I, I remember having two dreams specifically. I couldn't get something from the top shelf of a grocery store or whatever. And I would just start kicking my legs. And I would fucking just, flew. just fly up next to it. like Dude pulled my, that name or shit. My flying... In my dream is swimming, but in air, and it's weird. Like interesting. That's that's the only like. No, fucking keep on. That's the only. Uh, that's the only time I fly in my dream is if it if it's like I'm swimming, because I think that's the only way my mind can process it. Because you're basically flying in water, so why not? I had the same concept in there. That's fair. All right, here's one. It, this is just straight off the dome. This was big a while ago. Are there more doors or are there more wheels? Are you a wheel guy or, a, or like a door guy? What? Are there more wheels in the world than there are doors? So like cabinet, door, door, door. Are there more doors or are there more wheels? I'm going to say, this one's a tough one for me, but I think there's more wheels in the world. I would have to say that, too. Now, like, I'll combat that for, like... Anything that's circular-shaped. Like, you... Like, something that acts as a wheel. So, like, drawers have, like, six Knobs for the door. (laughs) I don't know if that's a wheel. I don't know if that classifies a wheel. But, like, you know, like, when you pull out a drawer, it has little wheels on it. Yeah. There's that. There's there's shopping carts. Like, this only goes deeper. There's shopping there's carts with wheels. Doors. There's fucking dollies, carts, cars, fucking, what else? The little skateboards. Like, all of those. Furniture. Some furniture see, Shit, wheels. like, see? I think there's more wheels in the world. My mom thinks there's more doors. And, like, her thing of it is... For, like, a a car, there's four doors. Technically, you could say the trunk's a door. 
So that's five. That outnumbers the wheels. But you can look at buildings, right? So there's more doors per person per car, right? And then you have to think how many, like imagine a big business. I take it back. There's more doors. (laughs) Yeah, but like imagine like a big business, right? Each one of those has doors. Each one of those has a cabinet. Each each one of those has wheels. Each business room has office chairs with six wheels. See? It only gets deeper. It's very thought provoking. I I'm gonna say there's more wheels in the world. That that's my thing. Comment if there's wheels or doors. Which one has more? I'm having an existential crisis right now. <laughs> it, it's it, the deeper you go. Um. All right, we'll 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 do one from a category. Um, Just so you know, we're about to hit our mark. We are pretty quick. We're gonna close this. I'm gonna find a good one. You want to do fashion, food, travel, or entertainment? Give me a category. Entertainment. Entertainment. Number thirteen podcasts aren't worth listening to. Get yeah. that shit out of here. You heard it here first, folks. <laughs> That's bullshit. <laughs> you heard it here first. I think podcast. You know, let's let's close on that. Why we're important. I I think it was Andrew Tate. Dude said that it's it's not worth reading is not worth it. And then I was listening to Jordan Peterson, who I actually love. Yeah. And I, I think I, Tony I, Robinson, they both sided on the same thing. Both are great guys. Yep. They both said that you should read more. And it, it comes to me that I I want to read. I like the idea of reading. It's just it's very hard for me to find the time to I read. I listen to audiobooks. So I, like I, I, listening I, to a podcast. Yeah. So you could read Jordan Peterson has numerous books and he advocates reading them. Tony Robinson has numerous books. And I also downloaded the Daily Wire app just to listen to Jordan Peterson's podcast. Exactly. Like my thing comes that you could listen, you could read somebody's book and, and have, Jordan Peterson lays it out, you can read somebody's book and have all of the knowledge they've accumulated in their lifetime. But if you do a podcast, you can listen to it and do other things. You can listen, and they're still expressing big points in their life. Yeah, I think podcasts are better than reading. Maybe not from us. We're not the most knowledgeable people. But. We, we are getting there. We we have backed it up. Anyway, we're coming to an end. Yeah. Chris, close us out. All right. Thank you for listening. This has been the Rebar Brothers Podcast. Uh, please like and subscribe our YouTube, and please give us a listen on Spotify. And on that note, good night. Good night. Good night.